Welcome back to my Roblox GUI tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about UI layouts with things like list layouts, grid layouts, page layouts, and things like that. So I want you to imagine that we're creating an inventory system, and we want to be able to display all the items in our inventory to show on one single frame. And the way that we would need to do that is to display each and every one of them onto the frame so that they have their own space within that frame. And to show you an example of what I'm talking about, what we're going to do is go to starter GUI, hit the plus sign, and we're going to insert a screen GUI. Next thing I'm going to do is insert a frame inside of the screen GUI. I'm just going to scale it up like this and move it into the center just like so. And inside the frame, I'm going to insert a text button. So with this text button, I'm just going to change the color of this to something like green. And typically the way that we would display items within a frame is we would simply just take the item and we would duplicate it and then move it inside of Studio just like this so that we have multiple items that are displayed. But there are some problems with doing it like this. For one thing, we would need to manually calculate where the exact position would be for each item so that the items are not misplaced just like this. But another thing is we also wouldn't be able to do this while the game is running as well because this is something we can only do while we're inside of Studio. So how do we fix this? We can use what are called UI layouts to basically do the work for us. And I'm going to show you a few examples of this. The first thing I'm going to show you is called a UI grid layout. So what I'm going to do is delete all these text buttons except one. And inside the frame, we're going to hit the plus sign and we're going to insert a UI grid layout that looks like this. So if we hit enter, then what's going to happen is we're going to have this button here. And if we duplicate this button, What's going to happen is Roblox is automatically going to place the second button next to the first one. And if we keep doing this, then Roblox is just going to continuously add more and more buttons in this row by column structure. So we start from the top left and then it just keeps going right until it reaches the other side of the page. So then it just continues down here and the process just repeats itself. And there are a lot of ways that we can customize this as well using our grid layouts. So inside of our UI grid layout, what we can do is change things like the padding. So how much space is in between each item. So we can change the scale to let's say 0.1 and 0.1. So it looks something like this. We can even change things like where we want the direction to be filled. So by default, it's horizontal, but we can change this to vertical so that it starts upward, then it goes down, and then it just keeps on going like this. We can even do things like setting where it starts. So instead of top left, we can do something like top right, where it goes from right to left instead of left to right. And I think you get the idea from here. So those are some things we can change with the UI grid layout, but rather than just using grid layouts, we can even use things like list layouts. So I'm just going to create a folder really quickly so that we can place the UI grid layout inside of there. And inside of our frame, what we're going to do is insert a UI list layout just like this. So now the buttons are displayed as a list and we can change things like the padding. So this is going to be the scale. We can change this to let's say 0.05. So now there's a little bit of space in between each button. Now you might've noticed that these buttons can appear off the frame just like this if you have so many buttons inside of one frame. And one thing we can do is set this property called wraps. So what it does is if it goes off frame, then it's just going to continue on the right side and go down the list just like normal. So those are some properties we can change. There are other things like the fill direction. So instead of going vertically, we can fill it horizontally by going from left to right, left to right, left to right, just like that. And we can even change things like the way things are aligned as well. So we have things like horizontal alignment. So instead of starting from the left, we start in the center or even the right side. We can change things like the horizontal flex, which basically says, how do we want each of the items to be separated from each other? In what style do we want it to be separated? So we can do things like fill so that it fills up the buttons all the way before it moves on to uh, going further down. We can even do things like space around, space between, space evenly, and you can just mess around with all these settings. There's a lot of things you can work with here, and you can pretty much do the same thing with vertical alignment as well. 
And those are just some things that we can do to make our items be displayed onto a frame. And finally, uh, one more thing that I want to show is called a UI page layout. I'm going to move this UI list layout inside the folder and inside of this frame, I'm going to hit the plus sign and insert a UI page layout. And basically what UI page layout is, is it's a, it's a type of layout that basically displays items onto a frame, but it's going to be separated by an individual page. So it's kind of like an individual frame within a frame. So what I mean is I want you to imagine that this is like a, an iPhone or like a mobile device where you can swipe right to then move on to the next page. We're now on page two and we can swipe right to move on to page three and then page four and so on and so forth. Um, it basically takes all the items, in this case, all these text buttons, and separates them as their own pages, and we can flip between those pages. So that's basically what that does. And we can make some pretty cool stuff out of this as well, which I'm going to show you in just a little bit. Um, but we can do things like change the way that the swiping is animated with easing direction and easing style. We can even change things like the padding in between each page as well. And we can also change things like the way that it is inputted as well. And from here, what we can do is show you how we can combine UI page layouts and UI grid layout to create like a home screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a, another frame here. Uh, I'm just going to change the color of this frame to be like, uh, I don't know, some sort of blue. And I'm going to change the size of this to one, zero, one, zero, just like this. And I'm just going to take a bunch of these buttons and put it inside of the frame, just like this. And I think I'm actually going to delete the rest of these text buttons as well. And now inside of this frame, what I'm going to do is insert a UI grid layout just like this. So now what we have here is a frame that contains these text buttons that have a grid layout that displays it like this. And with this page layout, this page layout is used for each one of these frames. So if I duplicate this frame, then what's going to happen is there's going to be a second page that's going to be for these buttons while this first page has these buttons for the first page. So just like I said before, we can change the padding a little bit so we can say like 0.05. So it really feels like we're swiping through like a home screen. To display this even further outward, uh, I'm just going to make this like 0.5 so we don't see it at all. So if we swipe right, then it's going to swipe the page to go to the next page. And there are some methods in Roblox's documentation that essentially allows us to move to the next page or to the previous page or to a specific page if you want. But this is basically how we use UI page layout in combination with UI grid layout. And we can even do the same thing with UI list layout as well. There are more layouts that you can use for your GUIs, which I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description. Uh, but I hope that this gives you a good introduction to using UI layouts inside of your game. And I hope you learned something from this video. So for today's learning objective, I want you to recreate this panel right here that utilizes different types of frames and different types of UI layouts as well. So from what you saw here, this is the first page that contains all of these different types of frames and layouts. And we can even flip through different pages that can lead to completely different looking frames. So I want you to be able to recreate this. And once you think that you've uh, achieved a similar frame to this one, then I think you're definitely ready to tackle on more complicated GUI systems because a lot of them definitely utilize UI layouts. And if you can understand how to implement them inside of your UI, then I think you'll definitely have a better time implementing the more complicated stuff. I would also like to give a shout out to my Patreon members. I really appreciate their support because it encourages me to continue making these videos for you guys. And if you wanna get access to my scripts, uh, early access to my videos and other benefits like that, then I will leave a link to my Patreon page in the description for you to check out. So that's pretty much gonna be it for today's video on UI layouts. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one. Take care.